Welcome to Warblog. Today I'm going to have a quick look at the Harasta district scenario in Syria, Middle East 2018. Um, small little game. Um, I actually really no idea how I'm going to approach it. Um, essentially, the um, this is a pocket held by uh, Ara Al Sham movement and um, there's this sort of base here which is under siege um, it's the armoured vehicle base south of Harasta uh, in the district of eastern uh, Damascus uh, and so they're really sort of trying to sort of lift that siege a um, couple of interesting things here really in the sense that I wouldn't say it's an evolution on, on how I do maps um, is a smallish change. Well, the thing is, it's near Damascus, so it's heavily built up. So a lot of this is sort of more urbanised than it appears. But what we've got here is a mixture, a mixture of these urban areas. You know, there's quite a lot of it. I mean, if we go into play mode, um, and look at the map. You know, so so we've got these these urban areas, which essentially, I mean, there's nothing unusual about them, but they're, they're slightly unusual in the sort of you know, the density of this in relation to how I do a lot of the other maps, which are mainly otherwise sort of desert, um, offers basically cover. I mean, there could be woods. This could be a wood, and this could be a wood. And so what you have here um, are essentially some defensive features here and here, um, and the requirement to essentially somehow get through this. I mean, obviously, it's clear that, you know, you could go um, just through here like that you know there's this sort of like open area or you could go around here um, alternatively you could fight your way through these sort of defensive areas and, and essentially how to um, how to do this but what I will actually just pause and reflect on um, I'll come back to this game in a second is another aspect that sort of touches on this and that's this game here now what you might not notice so much so from here is that there are a lot of villages um, let me even just go into play mode to actually demonstrate this um, there are all these villages and I mean I've I've heard this before and I felt and understood this before and but I've never really sort of designed the maps around this but I think I will sort of focus a little more on this in in the future or at least put in that as a, as a sort of strategic sort of direction uh, in, in how I build the maps. Essentially what I'm trying to get to here is they go, f they battle from village to village. I mean there's no defensive terrain. There's Um Regime Hill and, and that's it. It's the only non-desert hex on this entire game. And so what, what will happen is in, in this battle they'll, they'll fight from village to village because you get a defensive bonus. So this unit, well where would it fall back to? Well it could fall back to Rasam Al Abid or uh, Lubeda or it could go back to uh, Drabiya. Um, you, you, you know, but it's not going to sort of go back two hexes and make a valiant defense in this desert hex because there's nothing in there. And I think that's a, one thing that is sort of key to not so much understanding but observing about the whole sort of Syrian conflict is that you know that they appear to be sort of it appears to be focused around defensive features from one defensive feature to another, as opposed to say more traditional war, for example, North African campaigns of World War II, where they would actually build defensive features, say, across areas. So there, there could be, um, you know, something, it could be a defensive line across all these hexes that have no inherent defensive features or, or qualities, but they just build the trenches, uh, revetments, you know, utilising the local terrain to best effect. But, you know, they're not doing that. I mean, these are the natural defences, these villages, to some extent, and towns. And, and that's what they're doing. And that's why, you know, places like Mosul, um, Aleppo, and, and, and the likes, sort of, you know, were so significant because they were the basically massive defensive features. So, essentially, the point I'm sort of maybe try, try, trying to get to here is that um, it's a sort of slightly unusual and... You know, we're using sort of the, the, the towns and the urbans, uh, urban areas in this case more significantly as defensive features in their own right. And so, when you're looking at this map, what you're sort of thinking is, hmm, well, how are we going to achieve this? Well, we we know we want to um, relieve this, 
And it, it, there's nothing from rocket science on this. But it's not rocket science in the sense that, um, you know, there's any particular thing, you know, we need to resurrect Napoleon to sort of get some insight on how to achieve this. Um, but, you know, we, we could, you know, I mean, what, what are the options? Well, the thing is, we've got a defensive line there, and they've obviously got their defensive line, you know, parallel. And that's what these sort of frontline units are. But we've got basically some mechanized units, some armor with artillery, motorized uh, with, with some uh, armor and mechanized support. Well, we've got these three battle groups. And so, you know, in theory, they could come straight down here and just hit here. And we could come straight up here and try and punch through here. But you know, are there any other ways of doing this? For example, we could possibly push this around here. I mean, it doesn't look, you know, other than this one unit here, there's not a lot there. So again, and this is coming back to sort of, you know, one of the genesis and perceptions of how Warblog works. It, it, it's designed really not so much just to play the game, but to have a think about these things, you know, even if you want to just call them little puzzle games. Um, you know, I mean, to some extent, yeah, maybe that's what they are, but I don't really sort of see, see them like that. They're just exercises in, in mental stimulation, you know, using this form. Um, it, it just so happens, actually, I've been playing... Um, I've got a, a solitaire card game on, on my computer, and I, I haven't really played it before. I actually remove the games from my computer to stop me playing them, but... It's a newish computer and it just happens to be on there and I've played it a few times. I try not to play more than one game, but it can take 15 minutes to play it. And, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I've only been doing this video for seven minutes and, uh, you know, this is far more productive than playing one of those little card games, but they're mentally challenging, although they're completely puerile. And I keep I'll keep coming up with that, that that concept, you know, time and time again. You know, the sort of plurality of, of of game and the validity of, of actually playing a game for any sort of you know intellectual challenge or you know thing of that nature. Um, and then that's what these things provide. You, know, you sort of say, well, okay, well, it's, it's a pretty simple sort of concept. Um, you know, I mean, you can sort of sit there and think, well, how am I going to do this? And again, the point I'm, you know, trying to circle here is, that, you know, it's not rocket science, and there could only be, you know, not a lot of ways to do it. Now, the way I would approach this, sort of wanting to sort of possibly be a little more um, concerted in my thinking, is I would be more inclined to sort of maybe try and take a, 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 a beachhead in, in this urban area. Um, and what I would maybe be inclined to do is to fall back with this unit. But I think what, what I'm maybe trying to say is I want to spend I would like to spend the first couple of turns trying to actually consolidate a more a, a more sort of not sort of constructive a more or stable, but cons basically consolidate a front line from which then I can then drive my attack. Because at the moment these units are way back here, so. And, and the thing is, what I'm trying to think about is, well, where do I want my strategy to come through? Now, I think I do want to sort of battle through this urban hex, mainly because it will make me a lot harder to um, to, 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 to counter-strike. Um, but with this, I don't know. I really don't know what would be the best. Now, I'm, I'm toying with the option of just sort of coming and pushing through here, but I think... To some extent, this is going to form has to form a line of force like that, and this has to somehow form a line of force like that. Now, whether it's focused mainly here, or whether it's focused mainly here, is sort of something else. It still has to present that line of force. So that line of force has to include defensive options here, 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 and here, with maybe the punch being here. So whether I drive you know, my main force through here, which is I, I'm sort of tempted to do because I'm sort of like that. And then with this one, just really try to s essentially consolidate that line of force through these hexes pinned onto that hex, and then for this one to sort of develop that way. And and, and that's the sort of thinking that, you know, really, I, I, I really enjoy because I'm, I'm starting to sort of, you know, get a sense of how, how I want to play this scenario and, and, and how I want to achieve 
things that I want to achieve. And I think that's, you know, this this sort of thinking of lines of force. It's something that I think when you watch a lot of games, you don't you don't get that feeling. Uh, you, you know, especially with some of these larger hex games where you can move a lot further. They'll just sort of say, oh, oh, I can I can hit this unit, and then with their other units, they seem to be able to sort of exploit all the way down to there in one move. And it just doesn't seem particularly plausible. And, and I'm having a whinge again there. But the, the other point of, of what I'm sort of getting to here is you quite often, a lot of these games I sort of watch, and they'll talk about command and supply. And, and these are two things we sort of don't really bother with here. But these, these, when you actually play the game, as you sort of think maybe it should be thought of, or maybe it should be approached, you're inherently considering your lines of supply by con consciously forcing this. These, these two lines of force through, through here, it could be three, it could be four, but you've got a line. You know, we're not sort of just punching straight through here with everything, leaving all this open so that, you know, these units can, in theory, go back and cut the supply line. So, you know, but again, we don't know how big this map extends. For example, I mean, well, what's, what's to stop these units from going off the board here, up this road here, and coming on down here? You know, so we only have the, scenario, the constraints of the scenario, which is a box, you know, that, that, that big. Um, and we're working within that box. So within that box, we have the rules and the confines of space and time that we have in front of us, uh, and, and we just have to work with that. So I think, you know, from that point of view, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's useful to put it into perspective and sort of understand what it is. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to sort of do that. So I'm, I'm, go I'm going to use that sort of strategy that I just sort of suggested. Now what have we got in here? I've got quite a lot of units. Now the one thing I will just add on to, on, on top of that is in building my lines of force, uh, 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 essentially aiming for something at least like that to start off with, what I want to do is build up um, and, and, and build into my strategy my air, air strikes. So essentially I will, I will then, once I'm in this position, I will then say, okay, well I'm going to sit there for X number of turns until I'm satisfied that I have... I hold though that as a line of force, um, and I'm ready to go forward with a bit more of an understanding of the challenges that lie with regards to going forward, i.e., of the odds. Um, but that might not happen on the turn that I get into that position. What I want to do is say basically set up these artillery positions to start taking effect. Now the thing is, so what we're looking at there is a sort of like another another dimension in the in in the sort of the whole structure of this scenario and that is the, um, the the artillery so if we if we sort of look you know in particular at that um so so what we're saying we're saying well okay well, we're going to get this sort of defensive line that we talked about that's our land units we're going to keep them there until we're in a position where we're ready to sort of actually start moving forward but part and parcel of that is setting up you know this this artillery uh operation and now we've got we know we've got two in there we've got two in there um, I think we've got the map tool on, which I don't want on at the moment. Um, but the thing is, what we need to understand to some extent is that the um, these Al Sham movement units also have, at least I thought they had. Maybe I'm just not seeing this. Some rockets. That's bizarre. I have a feeling that the rockets are in here. Let me just go and look down here. No, I didn't put the rockets in. Oh no, there's one there. One. Oh, I can see what's happened there. So much so that I'm actually going to go in and edit. They should have three rockets. I put in three. I consciously put in three and gave the Syrians four. So that obviously the Syrians have got a... Um, have got, you, you know, that, that sort of 
capability, but they're not unchallenged in that respect, um, so much so that they can't just sit there just firing their, um, their, their, their artillery. Um, so I'm going to put this on pause actually, and then when I'm going to come back and start this again with, with, with the rockets in their appropriate positions, wasn't it? Okay, I've now put in the rockets. Um, so if we actually refresh this screen, we see some there. We've got them there, and we did have them there originally, and they're still there. So we, we, we've, got, we've got rockets. So I'm going to go into this. As, we haven't even done any moves. So this is starting a new game. I have to start a new game if I, if I change the base, the base structure of it. So. Essentially, same situation, but we're trying to cut this, so these lines of force, as said, but also trying to sort of understand, you know, how, how this artillery is going to work. Now we've got two lots there. I mean, two lots there. So essentially, we, we, we've got two lots of artillery versus one lot of rockets, but we, we don't have all the time in the world um, because um, this rocket unit here is clearly going to be pounding this, you know, uh, armored car base, armored vehicle base. Um, and they're not that tough, but I mean, they're just going to sit there firing rockets at here. So, I mean, essentially, at some point, they're going to be affected and then they're going to start routing. So, it's an interesting scenario because it all adds up to sort of, well, we, we, we do have some inbuilt time constraints. It's not as though we have to do this by turn five, but we obviously know that this is going to start having an effect. But the thing is, we could say, well, okay, we're going to use our air power to take that unit out, and we're going to focus on taking this unit out here, um, and this unit out here using our forces. So this is what our main; these, these are what our main uh, objectives could be. But he's quite he's quite well embedded in that sort of defensive feature, you know, that large wood. Uh, obviously, it's not wood; it's urban, but you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's a defensive feature, and he's well embedded in there. He's in there, but he's sort of a little more vulnerable. You know, he could move maybe to there or to there. I mean, moving his, his rockets to there might be a good thing. Um, but again, you, you know, I mean, our, our air power might not actually have much effect on these rockets, or it might, but, you know, that's committing our air power to that and maybe not committing it to, say, this large stack here, which might be attractive, or this one here, which is in the open, and actually doing some proper damage as opposed to just trying to sort of use it to prevent them from doing more damage, because that's not really going to affect things, in, in you know, too, too greatly. So anyway, I'm just going to sort of, I don't, I'm not going to play a lot further through, through, through this, um, mainly because I'm a bit busy, but I just wanted to sort of, you know, do, do a video, but I'm going to sort of start moving these units. I, I really don't know how I'm going to do this, but again, it's, just to get back, I want to, I want to focus on where my artillery is going to go. Now here, I could put this artillery in this hex here and pin everything down, and that gives it defense in in that heavy urban area but here there isn't really a particular hex ideally what I probably want to do is to get my artillery into this hex here um, as part of that that line of force where they'll be better defended etc um, etc et but on the way they're going to have to settle with being on this road now they're going to be well defended but how far can we get up this road because I want to fire them this turn I've got the drawing tool on I think no. Oh, I know what's wrong. This is interesting. Because I actually got a, um, yeah. I can flick through them. But I've got a problem on my mouse. <laughs> I've got a problem on my, on my computer. Um, I didn't realise it would have this this effect. Um, I'm not sure how to how to demonstrate the problem. But I can't I can't drag things. The whole drag thing on, on my computer seems to have gone. I'm going to probably have to, I probably have to actually restart my computer now. Um, but for example, if I open up a tab in in my browser, I can't drag that tab out to create a new a new browser window. You know, I can't move it around. So if I wanted to show you something on another screen, like I quite often do, dragging in another window with a map or a picture or a news report, I can't do that. But what I also can't do is drag things from my um, from my inbox uh, into you know in, in, into a folder, a respective folder, which I have to 
do a right click and then move to. So it's interesting actually because um, sometimes I suspect that these things are ordained from a high level. Uh, the drag functionality on my computer seems to be missing and, and as a result this complete this game's not unplayable because I can't play it without the drag feature. Look, I can't I can't drag it. It's not it's nothing to do with the game, it's my browser. Um, you know, I could go and sit on my other computer and play this quite happily. So that's it. I think you know I have to actually understand that, that I'm stuffed. I can't actually do any movement. But um, so it's interesting. How I made that 20-minute video. Um, I will have to restart my um, re restart my browser if I actually want to start actually playing these games now. Uh, restart my computer. I don't like restarting my computer because it inevitably the operating system tries to update itself and that can take like an hour or so it's stupid I, I, I wish I could turn it turn updates off but it doesn't seem possible um, I've never had an update that's actually produced anything but the thing is I think what well, maybe sort to, to sort of leave in, you know on there is the sort of final note is that I managed to actually um, man, man, managed to sort of talk for 20 minutes 21 minutes now and obviously with a bit of extra um, waffle at the end there, but um, about the strategy, and, and, and we still managed to play it without actually being able to ha have any movement. I mean, uh, we've all discussed sort of you know the concepts of creating these sorts of line of lines of force with you, you know a reflective stage, uh, you know positioning artillery uh, one two three four, you know in such a way one two three four, you know maybe it'd be better to put them there. But you you know sort of thinking strategically, etc. etc. And, and you know you don't need to actually even play the game to, to do that. I mean you can just sit there and, and with the drawing tool as as a sort of a visual aid. But even without that, you could start to think, hmm, well, hang on, you know, how can I do this? How can I do that? And I think this drawing tool is actually fairly critical, even in that extent, because you can almost sort of say, well, okay, we're going to focus mainly on taking this out. So our next move, and I'm not saying this was a good move or. But it's a possibility, but then you can sort of say, well, okay, well, I'm going to take that. And then you can start to visualize how that strategy might work. Um, you, you know, I mean, you could sort of say, okay, we're going to pin our movement our forces down there, so we're going to sort of try, try and do this. And we'll end up with a sort of line of force that looks like that. And then from there, we can say, well, we're in a great position then to strike through here, not just strike through here. But strike through there as well. Maybe trying to take this little feature or these two little sets of hexes, and then creating a huge isolated pocket that can then be taken out. You, you know, so, so using this drawing tool, you can actually use it to good effect um, in 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 that sense. And I quite I quite enjoy that. I mean, you know, you can sort of, you know, you. you Obviously, we've got the front line there, but we could say, okay, we're going to do this very differently. We're going to push straight through here. Um, and, and so we can say, well, on the first turn, we're going to build like that. And then on the next turn, we'll build through like that. And then we're going to try and create a, a position like that. And you say, well, okay, well, that's us. I mean, that would be an archetypal salient. Um, but how about that? I mean, but with the drawing tool, we can actually visualize that and consider it as a strategy. And, and a way of approaching this puzzle, if you want to call it that. I don't like calling it that, but I, I like to hit the nail on the head, really, and sort of, you know, I mean, it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's a sort of development consideration of, of strategic approach to, you know, this, this scenario. Um, but, you know, I mean, that could be the way to do it. And, and we could say, well, we could do that quite quickly because we've got the forces. I mean, you know, we've only got these little hexes here to take out. Um, you know, it might take a few battles, but we've got because we've got mobile forces, we could probably get maybe two, uh, you know, attacks a turn on these units, often forcing them to retreat, and then securing that. You know, and again, there will be considerations. So, well, we're in the open um, and subject to attack. We need a lot of units to maintain that sort of front line. Um, you, you know, how how would that work? But we could play that scenario as well. So anyway, I'm not going to go too much further. Uh, it's a shame I can't move anything. I didn't notice <laughs> I couldn't move anything. Um, but I will get back to you when I sorted my computer out. Um, and uh, uh, speak to you later. Cheerio.